Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we uh, were talking about sidewalks. Jamie and I were meeting today about sidewalks again in the community room. And uh, some engineering firm out of somewhere has put together a future plan for Tallahassee <coughs> and for uh, Manchester and uh, overlaying work Jamie did on the side, future sidewalk plan on top of on the top of that there collecting and turn it to three years from that. And uh, mobility throughout the communities I guess. Um uh, like moving to people and traffic and whatnot. And uh, the guy gave me a really interesting idea. We have had on our agenda several times throughout the year about uh, got some sidewalks and it always comes up with a real big question mark. Uh, it's how to do it. It's just tough. And, uh, and then what we have now, we've had to amend because one of the, the developers was doing something that was totally crazy and they can do what was in our company. So we had to amend that. Uh, so anyway, uh, the next meeting I want to bring up was this conversation here they told me about sidewalks. I appreciate everything you're doing with that. Scott, you know how that works. There's one other thing that's not planned. Thank you. All right. Mr. Taylor. Any information? Okay. We'll get a resolution on it. Stay on your 
June is a resolution provided for capital project funding up to two million five hundred thousand dollars to fund cafeteria and classroom additions to College Street Elementary School. I have a motion. Move. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any of y'all want to speak on this at all? If you have any questions, we'd be glad to. Uh, Angela, we're excited about the possibilities and uh, the opportunities and feel like that uh, if we can can get that commitment that we can move forward and you know, we're ready to do so. Yeah, I'd like to discuss it. Uh, so we've got uh, one estimate here from the architect. Four point one million dollars. New kitchen, one point one renovation, six hundred seventy-five stock work. But all we have right now, we get ready to vote to commit the city dollars to, is one estimate from an architect. We've been, we've, that's not been shot. It's not been, we've had no input in that. It's just a and uh, it's a total open-ended thing. We were committing. Okay, we're committing money to. We have not talked about how we're going to pay for it. We have not talked about how we can get it. We have not talked about how long we can do it. Is this a one-year <coughs> deal? Is this a ten-year deal? It's like, uh, uh, it's totally a resolution without context. There's absolutely no context for it. Well, it looks, to me, it looks like all we're doing is we're agreeing to fund up to this amount. We don't know if we had different stone figures and we could specify an amount. Since we don't have cut stone figures, we have set a top limit, we may only need to borrow you five hundred thousand dollars. Open on that borrow you need. But we don't have to borrow anything for that year. It's just that you just check it out. But if we don't, if we don't commit fund anything. If we don't commit to get them funded, then they're dead in the water. And I understand what you're saying, Bill. There's no cutting stone figures. We're not committing. We're not voting on cutting stone figures. We're voting on a cap. Okay. Not to exceed. Well, this this is something that we we have to do. We in the school did. We got to support the school. No, this question that. I, 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 I understand that. Uh, it's something we got to do. All right. No reason to agree. So we need to go ahead and do what we got to do. I, just one more. Uh, I understand what you're saying. I have flashbacks of the issue I'm looking at. So we're basically, your primary concern. Sounds like that 4.1 may or may not be more. Could be, um, could be less if you get that for a set of term. So, could we, it, this would be the same language, I think it would be getting that. Could we say up to 2.5 or 61% of the project, which would be 2.5 on the 4.1? They can probably take that map and try it. But that way we're capped at both lakes. So if the scope of the project goes down, our obligation goes down. If the scope of the project goes up, we're still at 2.5. That's what this says. Pretty much. Just put this percentage in there with the dollar. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If we just put the percentage 61%, is <coughs> that give the 2.5? Yeah. But not, but not to exceed this. Exactly. So you can't put two point five. You need to put two point five in there because if it goes up, that sixty one percent can go up. Exactly. Yeah. So has the school board had a discussion about how much money they're going to put into this project? Yes, sir. We, we've been okay. transparent with what well, it's in the it's in the resolution as well. well on one point six. Um, I believe it's in there. All right. Okay. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, this could encourage tomorrow. Was that okay? Yeah. It's a negotiation. How about 50, 50, 01? What if we go 50? I went to school next Friday. They don't teach math, do they? I think you're good. 
<laughs> we go 50-50. Right. Uh, 60 more percent will get you for what you need, right? Yes, sir. Where's your progress? 61 percent works. Uh, I think Ms. Anderson has it. Yeah. So I, 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 will, okay. I will present an amendment to the motion that the language state that we will fund up to 2.5 million, or no more than 2.5 million, or up to 61 percent of the profit. Whichever slants. That probably raises what's here because what's here is it required them to spend all of their money and we just made up the difference. If you're going to make it 61%, then for every dollar of the whole project, it's probably going to increase our percentage over the way it's written. The way it's written is not in the stone. So, but here's what I'm saying. Then 2.5 of 4.1 is 61%. Yes, sir. But here's, here's the thing, suppose it's only 3.7. Well then we're we're gonna pay three we're gonna pay sixty one percent of three point seven instead of four point one. That's about more than the difference between one point eight, one point six and where it is. Which is okay. It's, it's, it's whatever you want. See they're obligated to pay one point six. Yeah. Okay. So if it's three point seven, we're only obligated to pay two. It will be sixty one percent. But whatever the Lord's pleasure is. I have a question. You disagree with hard numbers or will you it, it, it went, okay, process. Um, where we are now, basically, we, we need a commitment, um, if I may. Um, we, need, we, need, we need a commitment saying that you will fund up to that, that dollar amount. And basically what happens from there is we go into, uh, from the work of the architect, we would um, get, have to make a decision, we would have to make a decision whether to hard bid or go through a construction uh, management company. And if we go through construction management, then you, everything's going to be bid regardless. But um, we're, our goal will be to bring this project in at the best quality, at the lowest number that we can. And, and we are confident, we're very confident, that it will come in below 4.1 million. Um, if we look at this, it will be over a two-year physical period, not, not one. This year, sorry, I get away from that. Which could actually involve the budget to the plan construction. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you I didn't tell you that. <laughs> you just collect the funds, you'll say that. But what um, there are some, we're looking at every cost saving way we can, as far as uh, who would be the construction manager or regard bid, uh, as far as Right now, uh, if we were to start the process tomorrow, the uh, building would, would, would start this spring with a spring of 2021 entry. So that's, uh, yes sir. My, my question is more of totally trust everything after that you just said about y'all being paying attention to dollars and all that, but my concern is we've only asked Meridian. Okay, so the, the, way, the way the process would work is you, you have the architect. Um, the architect would look at it, but when you bid out the process, it would be like um, like when we build a home, if you build it cost plus. So when it goes to bid, whatever that's it, until we can bid it, until we know how, that we have the money to go through the project, there's no reason for us to put out bids. Well, I guess my point being, we've only got more if you ask the other architects to see if they if to do, to, for them to do. I have talked to, I have not talked to another architect. We, but that's my concern. But, but to talk to an architect costs you money. Well, that's wrong to the point I'm getting to. I think, I totally think you'll shop it out and everybody's going to be it. But on the front end, you get two architects or three architects that render plans for you, and then you choose from those two. I think you should. Um, and, and once again, how much architect cost? Uh, how, much this, how much dollar have you paid for it? We have been working with Meridian uh, for at least 10 years. Since I've been there in February and, and the process had already started, uh, that company has been paid $50,000. So, so uh, yes. We, but we have no assurance, really, you know, if there's three architects that looked at it, that that's going to be the actual cost of it because I have to be that. I get that. I get that. But, but architects. You know, you can use different ideas from a different architectural firm and say, well, 
you know, you've got this in here, but you probably don't need this wall over here, you need that wall there, or do something different. They have different ideas, that's how they compete. They do. The, the beauty of this one is it's a very simple, it's a very simple project. Uh, it's four classrooms and a kitchen. And the the, the structure, the size, uh, it, it is um, it, it, it's a simple project. Now, let me ask you, speaking of that, we did discover the other day that it could potentially be done in phases because even if we did the cafeteria, there would still be room enough to drive around behind the cafeteria to get to the fourth classroom. So if it, this project could effectively be done in two It could, and it also impact um, the school for at least three years. Well, I'll give the Anyway, I'm just saying, okay. that. So three years ago when you did this project, yeah, it was three and a half million dollars. Yes, sir. Today it's four point one. Yes, sir. Three years ago, I wanted to keep it on the way. Yes, sir. And the, the school, the Board of Education has, we, we need to move forward. Mayor, can we go? Okay. Well, do you have some second round? They did the most good. Yeah, what they're saying, I'm interested in. About that. Yeah, so okay. I mean, that's why I was asking. So if, if the project comes under, let's say it comes to $3 million, where do those savings slide to? Less than 50%. Because it, I mean, I do the six in my head. If it was $3.2 million, we would pay 50% of the total cost. It goes up to, like you say, 61%. But if it went below $3.2 million, we would pay a less percentage. You could just pick whatever number and yeah, but they have to pay all of their money, all the money they've got saved first, so we just pay every extra dollar up to whatever, whether it's 3.1, 4.5, but no more than 2.5. Yeah, yeah. That makes more sense. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. 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 We're not paying any more than 61% no matter what. So and it's a $4.1 million dollar project. If it slides down to a $3 million dollar project, as it's worded right now, the city would save that full million I got you. versus the yeah. school board. So there's not a split. If it's helping the school board pay for it, it slides down a little bit. Yeah, but that same percentage. We're saying the same thing two times. Uh, I don't know if you have to go on. You know, ready? Call her up. Alderman French? Aye. Alderman Howard? Aye. Alderman Bellamy? Aye. Alderman Messick? Aye. Vice Mayor Nichols? Aye. Thank you. Next thing, <laughs> next thing on my agenda is a resolution for a contract with Musco Sports Lighting LLC amount of $193,321 for lighting materials to soccer fields. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. 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 I, I do want to point out this is a uh, a couple years ago, we worked with the uh, state of Tennessee on EC, a joint ECD and tourism grant. Tourism funded that grant fully, and what we're going to be paying for now is these lights to be set into the infrastructure that was already funded by tourism for the soccer fields. So we did that two years ago. Forethought, go ahead and have the electrical grid in place, and this is a continuation of that. So I'm yeah. excited to support this board. Aye. Alderman French? Aye. Alderman Howard? Aye. Alderman Bellamy? Aye. Alderman Messick? Aye. Vice Mayor Nichols? Next thing is a resolution to request members of the legislative delegation of the General Assembly co sponsor and support a joint resolution to support the emergency. Communication service charge 911 fee to the monthly rate of a dollar and a half. Okay, uh, what this is is uh, this is the 911 board. And before the Coffee County, Del Alma, and Manchester all was we got the vote on things. It's nothing to us. It's just something that the 911 board is doing. They have to send it to Nashville to get it okay. 
it, uh, it's just all three of us have to have a resolution on this. You may cut the rates at one time and just place the rates at the original rate. Right. <coughs> okay, we we'll get the vote. Uh, so moved. Second. Is there any more discussion on um, I would. I'm going to vote no for this um, simply because I think there's another way to do it rather than taxing people. Uh, the state of Tennessee has an ungodly amount of money in surplus each year, and they've done it for the several years in a row now. And I think they need to start passing that money back down, particularly into emergency services. And I advocate for them to fund things like this, and I advocate for them to fund things like first responder. Uh, Investments, particularly in the cities that are on the interstate. I've written to my legislative body for years asking for those, but they keep collecting taxes, and keep collecting taxes, and keep putting it into a rainy day fund, and they don't support things like this. So I'm not going no, to. No, this is do. Yeah, but this is a fee, so it turns into. Yeah, but, tax. but, but that is, the 911 <coughs> would they, sure. they collect that money to pay for. They buy equipment, they do everything out there. And I'm saying the state ought to do it for them. They won't do it no more. If you get them to do it, I'll vote no. Yeah. Well, they're not going to. They're not going to as long as we go and pass it down. Ardman French? Absolutely not. Ardman Howard? Yes. Ardman Bellamy? Uh. Ardman Messick? Uh. Boss Mayor Nichols? Uh. The one that says have second reading and wants to prohibit animals on city property. Passed first, August 6th. Any a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Call it. As a member of the community, I have a problem with the ordinance as it's written. I don't care if you've looked at the newspaper article that stated that you were voting on this. For your last meeting, the picture they put in the newspaper happened to be of my parent. She cares, I take her a lot of places. She's properly restrained. The way you have it written right now, you're prohibiting me from taking her in, in, into any of the events. According to your regular leash laws, those prohib you know, coming into building and all that is already set in stone. I have a really big issue about not being allowed to take my bird and other people having been able to take their animals into and around community events as long as the animal is properly restrained. And in my case, as a parrot, she's in a harness. She can't leave me. She will, if people come up to me and ask to see her, I'm under control of her. She's safe with people. I'm not the only person in the city that brings their animals to events. And as such, the way your exceptions are written, I can't take her pretty much, I can't even take her up to the square when, we have, when they've got their meetings or their um, market on Saturday mornings. I go up there almost every Saturday. The people in the market knew my bird before they knew me. There's people in the market that have dogs. The animals are known before the humans are also. And we're a welcome sight. When it comes to community events, I don't believe a properly restrained animal is going to cause issues on the environment or even people as your terminology applies more to animals that are unrestrained. If you have owners that actually care about their animals, it shouldn't be an issue. I will not take my bird in a building. It's not appropriate. She's not a service animal. She's not a therapy animal. But if you look back at some of the activities and events, and I'm sure some of you have seen me with my therapy before, she and some of these other people who bring animals in are actually adding to the situation because these are people, and these are kids, these are adults that have not really ever seen or interacted with some of these other animals. As long as they're properly restrained, and even as, as your ordinance is written right now, 
Nobody except for an ADA type animal can bring their animal onto city grounds. There are people around the community that also walk their animals, clean up after their animals, on city property. You're restricting that also. I don't want to see this pass as written. If you expand possibly the leash laws, then you've got more of community support. I know Manchester Times did a one of their polls. How many people vote for it? How many people vote against it? And how many people don't care? There's an outstanding number of people who do vote against it. Granted, it's just one of these, hey you, what do you think, type things. But I think in the long run, you're hurting the community by not allowing the animals. She's, my, in my case, she's probably restrained. I'm a consent conscientious owner, as well as most of the others. It's not just my bird, it's people who have got dogs, who have got other animals, that your ordinance, as it's written, is hurting. Okay, thank you. I'm going to vote against this. I'll, I will be in favor of the expansion of leash laws, uh, but not this one. I think, I think if we just made it very simple that if you've got an animal on, on city property, it has to be restrained. This all came about because somebody brought a snake. That, well, that snake has got to be restrained somehow. And he will hold the nose of it, wrap around the neck, and not restrain it. So I would be in favor, like, Ryan of just either gutting this or amending it to say any animal on city property has to be restrained. And I'm and I'm fine with the <coughs> terminology inside the inside the buildings. Uh, I think exactly what she's saying, the spirit of it is more of the business element and not the event element. If it's an event on the square, I think that's completely different than somebody coming into the pay the water bill. Well, most people don't want dogs in their business anyway. So how do we fix it? Because we can't see anything through all that right now. <coughs> I mean, I, I'm going to put no on the answer. I think we have a, another ordinance to change that law. So we will just we suggest postpone it to next day. Just vote this down up here where we're at one, just strictly saying. Is this an is this is an amendment? Sorry, Bob. I didn't get to it. Go ahead. This is an amendment to the leash law. It's an expansion. It's an expansion, really, and all the it incorporates that. If you want to work on it, you can just defer it. If you want to put that and start all over again, it's this in reverse. This is the first one we got. Right? Make motion to defer. Second. Okay. Call roll the phone. Next meeting, we have a month to work on it. Alderman French? Aye. Alderman Howard? Aye. Alderman Bellamy? Aye. Alderman Messick? Aye. House Mayor Nichols? What's your name, Nick? My name is Karen Fisher. Ms. Fisher, stick with me. Mr. Ewell, you're right set up. That's not a problem. I'm more than glad. Copy her on your email. You're not both yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. It may be <coughs> for the Manchester Times to just put all that in the title. So they at least read it because they did. I think a lot of it was reading the title, not reading the article. I read the title and the article. Yeah, I don't even you, you, you know, I got to speak to about it. You the comment section, not everybody did. I pulled the ordinance and printed it up to make sure I knew what I was talking about. I just, I hate it. We have people all there that legitimately think they can't take their dog to a dog park. Yeah. That's just. Or that, that was written in the ordinance that that's not an issue. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but, Next thing I have said, written in order to meeting the zoning more city managers for other for planning and development proposed to Highway Howard and Watts Maryland Howard and Taylor Hills Road Highway, and that property described in the relative books referenced there as first reading August 6th. Motion. Second. Second discussion. Call the Alderman French? Aye. Alderman Howard? Aye. Alderman Bellman? Aye. Alderman Messick? Aye. Vice Mayor? Aye. 
First reading of the rules to be mixed from Mr. Code 5720, relative to disposition of surface property. Let's take it first. Any motion? So moved. Second. Have second. I'll make a motion.
okay, I'm uh, committed for the city on uh, reparation. I think we've had two people put in for uh, the stand, uh, Rogers. He put in for it that he has to be reappointed. Let's do them one time. Yeah. Okay. We'll have a motion on the motion second. Stand. Second. Okay. Any discussion on him? Call up. Alderman French? Aye. Uh, Alderman Howard? Aye. Uh, Alderman Bellamy? Aye. Uh, Alderman Messi? Aye. Uh, Vice Mayor Nichols. Okay, on the two-ism, uh, Stephen Bank, I don't think he reapplied. And uh, we had a Dustin Gavin. I, I want to make a motion. Okay, do I hear a motion for the deficit? Set. So 
we're all speaking the same language. And right now, we don't really have that tool to do. I think that would be. And I think we also probably need to have uh, appointment parameters for the non-voting members. The director of the chamber is. Uh, Things of issue. Yeah, that's that's you know so long as the director of the chamber. But the industrial and education, I would recommend that those be appointed by this board uh, because they can change. Like we we don't, for example, we don't have control over who is appointed to the industrial board. Uh, the county commission does. So we should be able to select from those three members as to who's going to serve this board. Right now, we print. Future though, we can have language to support picking who gets in that spot. Do what you want. I don't believe really, that I would limit myself to, to just to people, people that they, the county commission puts on the industrial committee. I probably wouldn't do that. You just pick who you want. You know, that, that would be my only thing is adding. An education person to an industrial focus and a chamber focus. We're looking at not only that we have in place nobody works in education. <coughs> yes, but I mean, at the slate that we nominated for the voting board, there's no education. But well, I can change too, like the next person not be. Sure. I, I think we use them all the time. Okay. Especially the shift in. Hey, Y'all wanted to add another person. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. All right, this is just people that non voters, just we don't vote on them first. Yeah. Hey, we could let the could the board pick those people. We just say there are three slots and let the board do that. What's this form? Yeah. Any city Well, I mean, it depends. What do we want there? Do we want someone to come in and kind of? What are we looking for for those non-voting members? I mean, I, I'm so looking. I'm looking for bringing expertise. I don't, you know. I, I have a, a little reservation given the, the, this board control and say that's going on. I mean, I think it's, they get to pick the direction of kind of how we're going to format it, but at the same time, I think, especially in an advisory position, you may want a particular type of advice. Okay. Well, I think we have well, I mean, like I said, let's just keep growing. I know. No, we, we, uh, yeah. Okay, but to be fair, okay, I'm just going to say this. To be fair, I've been to every governor's conference since I've been elected to the Board of Mayor and Alderman. I've been to every tourism conference since I've been elected to the Board of Mayor and Alderman. And every time I talk about ECD, the one thing gets left out is education. And what does every single one of these, what do these organizations do? They, they focus on education. You need more of an impact on education. So that, I mean, that's why I'm making the recommendation. Not just make them, to make anybody happy. Uh, I think we have a glaring oversight there that we need to have an education call. I'm not saying, I don't care who you point, but you don't have to point anybody. You can let them point at whatever your prerogative is, but I think it's important that we involve education in this. Just go ahead and make your motion. Go through. And, uh, I mean, a motion that we have the chambers and Shiano, and so that Joe would say for me, industrial, uh, an industrial appointment and education appointment. You want to set the terms for those? Are they going to be an annual appointment or because this is not a, a statutory and member? I would board. say an annual appointment. You want to name the people or you just want to? we? I'm that. When we're talking about the chamber, we need to. That's point out that it's a that's a director. director yeah. So but the two would be annual. 
industrial education. And, and we could appoint, we could appoint the superintendent of schools with education. Or let them appoint whoever served it. Those two would be fixed that way. There'd be no question about how they work. Yeah. I, I'm always careful about uh, I volunteered Dr. Paul for too much stuff on the But I, I mean, I agree that if, if we let them at the very minimum pitch, we serve them. Director, whomever they choose themselves. Or I think that uh, have Rayfield stepped out there, said he wanted to do it, said a lot for him. And he does a lot in, in the school. For the school. So we can have that language move forward and we can have initial appointments of Brian Taylor and then of course Kevin. Yep. Would you be the chamber chamber of president's official? Mayor, I'd like to see Dr. Pat. He's, a, he's our city school board member, and he can be on the board. I'm obviously thinking high school. That's why I'm here for that. I'm here with high school. What's your favorite? Okay, you'll say. With that language, is that what we're doing? Yes, yeah, so what we vote on? What's the motion? We've got somebody for the chamber, <coughs> industrial board, and education. That's a motion, Gerald. Motion. <coughs> yeah. well, the way I heard it was to name the chamber press as an ex officio non voting member. Point someone with an education background, the same person being Taylor Rayfield, and someone with an industrial background, so it was the person being Brett Parson for one year terms to non voting, non quorum county members to the ECD. That's what I understood. Yeah. 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 Yes. Aye. Uh, Aye. Alderman French. Aye. Alderman Howard. Aye. Alderman Bellamy. Aye. Order my message. Last mayor. Uh, Doug Prater, you would make a, you would do a good job. Ma'am. Doug, you would have to do a good job at. <coughs> All right. Well, I hear motion that the permanent one would be. Absolutely. So good. Second. Second. Just to restate that for this member is to appoint Rachel Barber, Mike Meterhouse, or as group one, the two year term people, appoint Carter Sane and Jeremy Anderson as the second group, or the four year term people, and appoint Ken Hunts to Rebecca French and Teresa as the third group, the six year people. Is that the way it came out? Yeah. <coughs> Maybe that's a kill will fight. All right. Is any more discussion? Alderman French? Yes. Alderman Howard? Yes. Alderman Bellamy? Uh. Alderman Messi? Uh. House Mayor Nichols? Uh. Alderman French? Second. All right. We got one more. Let's put the school board mayor on the committee. Wait, wait. Second. Oh, well, we're going to discuss that in the second. All right. Uh, committee. All right. I'll take the playing field. Don't entertain it. Okay, you keep him out. Hold up. Uh, I, we're not going to switch. 
Så ja.
All right. <laughs> <laughs>